What's up, prayer warriors? What's up, what's up? And it's your girl, Prophetess Verna London. What's up, what's up? I ain't gonna be before y'all long. I just came on here to encourage you guys on today. Hallelujah, I pray that you are having a most amazing day. I pray that you have had the most amazing week thus far. Amen. Y'all seen that video? Hallelujah, Jesus. To God be the glory for what he is doing in the prayer warriors' lives. Amen. So, um, yeah, I, was, I hit the pause of the video. Y'all, I'm sorry. But like I was saying, I hope y'all seen that video with your girl. You know, go ahead and release me to start calling my, go ahead and start walking in my calling and my destiny. When I started doing the YouTube videos, who knew that on, what it was, March the 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. 2023. God will allow your girl to be ordained as prophetess Verna London. He told me to go ahead and release it. Um, I have so many videos up, so I can't remember what video it was. But, I, you know, I've been doing YouTube. I'm going to have to go back and look and see how long I've been doing the videos. Go back and look at my first one. Probably about a year now. I see. Or right at the year. It might not be the year. It might be right at the year. But anyway, who would have thought? You know what I'm saying? You know, I went. To, I have been I already been to ministry school. And if you go look at the video, it'll give you a little, you know, testimony. But I tell my testimony on a lot of my videos. But nobody but God. Because I did not think this year. I would have been getting ordained. I wasn't expecting it to be that soon. I'm not going to lie. But God. But God. That's why I'm always the small eye trying to come on and encourage you to keep pushing in your hopes and your dreams. And I know at times it get tough and it get, you know, you be like, when, you know? But uh, I ain't came on here to babble because I don't want to be on here that long. I just came to, uh do a word and I am humble I have an attitude of gratitude I am so humble that God chose me amen to be his prophetess amen and all prophetess and prophets are different they gifts are different we are many members and we have different diversities of gifts Amen. And I just thank and I praise God for who he is in my life. And you ought to go ahead and thank God for who he is in your life. You ought to go ahead and thank God for what he is about to do in your life. I put up other another video before this that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard about what God is getting ready to do for the warriors. That he is preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That God has anointed your head with oil. And everybody is not going to be able to sit at your table. Your spiritual table. You have to be very selective of who you allow to sit at your table. God is preparing a table. In the presence of your enemies. My God. And guess what? It's going to be worth it. It's going to be well worth it. Amen. So keep pushing and keep pressing. Amen. On your dreams, your visions, your hopes. Your purpose, your destiny, and most of all, you don't give up on you. As I like to talk about a lot, 
But some of us, yeah, we have people that's backing us up in our corner. And some of us, it's going to be God himself. Because you are chosen. And you have to remember that if you don't get up and fight for you, ain't nobody else going to fight for you like you going to fight for you. Don't give up on you. You're going to have to go against the grain. You will have to build your relationship with God. You will have you are gonna have to keep on moving when it look like ain't nothing happening. To God be all the glory. Amen. So I got my little night hat on. I done, um took my hat on. I had that little quick weave on my head. I'm like, ooh, I don't see how people wear quick weaves all the time. It, it just feel like it was squeezing my scalp. I'm like, uh-uh, I gotta take this out of my head. But I wanted to do it for my uh, my ordination ceremony. It was so intimate. It was so different. It was done like none other, like back in the day, baby. When God used to sin. Don't give up on you. If you don't fight for you, for some of us, ain't nobody coming. You have to get up. You have to push. You have to get up and fight. Literally. Don't that sit there and die spiritually. That's the only way you're going to get it. If you don't get up and fight for you and you don't believe in you, it's not going to happen. All right, y'all, excuse my head because like I said, I had did it for my own special occasion. I give God the glory and all the praise, all the honor. Amen. For what he has done in my life. Hallelujah. I just give God the glory. Hallelujah. It was just like I say. It was so intimate. It was so different. It was just like none other. And I, I also was going to say how God used to send people to people. You know back in the day how he used to send the men and women of God to different people. Or how he would do it. In, in, in unfamiliar places and unfamiliar spaces, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the, it was the unusual way. That's how it was for me. It was the unusual way. It was so different. It was so different. It was the unusual way. To God be the glory for what he has done. Prophetess, Verma London. Who would have thought? Me, baby, it's nobody but God. When I tell you it's nobody but God, it's nobody but God. And every prophet is different. Don't look at your purpose, your destiny, your vision, whatever it is that you are doing. Like nobody else do you. Stay on your level, in your grade. Take baby steps. Let God do it. Don't you do it. Let God do it. Just like me, I'm going to let God order my steps. If he ain't telling me to say it, I ain't saying it. If he ain't telling me to do it, I ain't doing it. If he ain't telling me to go, I ain't going. If he ain't telling me to speak it, I ain't speaking it. Because I'm not going to get in trouble with God. Baby, God don't play. And I ain't going to get in trouble with him. I ain't about to boast. I ain't about to show off. I'm going to pray. And I'm like, Lord, you need to guide me. You order my steps. I don't want to order my own steps. I want to be led by God. I want to be humble. Amen. All right, let's get started. So, last night, I was watching this movie. And this where I got this scripture from. It's like God will minister to you in different ways. Because somebody had told me something. And God was like, mm mm. That's not the way it's going to be for you. Because God had told me, had the, my mentor to tell me the type of prophet I was. And I said, God, I know that's God because for my past experience, experiences. And somebody had told me something. And God was like, it's not going to be like that. I'm not going to say what he told me. But he told me it wasn't going to be like that for me. Just because it happened for you that way. That don't mean it's going to happen for me that way. 
And just because they happen for me that way, it ain't might not happen for you that way. But that don't mean that you might not have the same calling or whatever your calling is or however God has chosen you. God use different people in different ways and work in different people's lives in different ways. So God, he was like, you can save it and read it. He said, but it's not for right now. He said, because that's not for you right now. I'm like, okay. And he began to break it down to me. And I'm like, my God. And when God bestowed that mantle on me, y'all, it was so different. It was so different. It's like, I can't explain it. But it was different. It was so different. And he said, that is not for you right now. And he began to just talk to me. And I knew it was God. I knew it was because of what another thing that happened in my life. I'm not going to share it because sometimes when God confirms something to you and you wasn't even expecting it. Like, it, you just wasn't expecting it at all. Because nobody know you was thinking like that. You, you, are, you already know. So, don't let nobody confuse you. If it's you and God for a season, God is going to lead you. He is going to guide you. He is going to speak to you. He is going to talk to you. He is going to be letting you know what's right and what's wrong. And I'm talking about concerning you. If you say it's something wrong, if you did something wrong, if you think it's something wrong, He is going to correct you. And He may have your mentor to correct you. But... Don't think that you have to operate like somebody else. Because you don't. It was so different. It was different. It was so different. It was intimate. When I say baby. And I could tell the difference. It's just something. It's just. It's just. I could just tell. That amounts of baby. The Shemora prophet. I say, Lord, that's me. I had never heard that. But when she broke it down to me, and then I studied it, studied it. But I'm gonna get further into it. But I know from what I read, I say, that's me, cause I've been doing that the whole while. The small eye. Only when I do a lot of my videos, that's the type of person I was. <laughs> Well, you're going to know it's going to resonate with your spirit. Amen. Just like when somebody told me something, God was like, mm -mm, that's not for you. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want you to do that right now because I don't want that to get in your spirit because that's not for you. It's not. It wasn't for me. You know, sometimes people may look, but they don't know your story. They don't know. They don't know how you fought. They don't know how you want to throw in the towel and God ain't let you throw in the towel. They don't know. So God be the glory. He get the glory in my life. Amen. All right, y'all. Let's go get off and read. Oh, yeah, and I got this scripture off of, off of a movie. I was watching a movie. And I got it off of the movie. I said, my God. I said, oh, that's scripture for me right there. I got to share that with the prayer warriors. So let me go ahead and read it. And I'm going to read some of it with a meaning then. It ain't the whole scripture, but it's some parts of the scripture. And it's Joel chapter 2, verses 18 to 27. Verses 18 to 27. And it is the land refreshed. It says, Then the Lord will be ze zealous 
for for his land. Zealous, Z E A L O U S. Zealous for his land, and pity his people. The Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and new oil. I, he, wait, let me read that again. It says, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil. And you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. But I will remove far from you the northern army. And will drive him away into a barren and desolate land. With his face toward the eastern sea and his back toward the western sea. His stench will come up and his foul odor will rise because he has done monstrous things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you beast of the field. For the open pastures are springing up. The open pastures are springing up. And the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. And the tree bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their fruit. And remember, if you watch my ordination ceremony prophet Tanika was led to give me a bowl of fruit and the fruit meant the um the fruit of the spirit she said god had told her to do that listen at this i was like my god baby harvest season honey the, the, okay, it says, and the tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. The former rain and the latter rain. No, let me see. I'm missing something. He says, Be glad then, you children of Zion. This is about heavy. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully. And he will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vats and the vats V A T S shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Sorry. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The crawling locust. The consuming locust. And the chewing locust. May my, he says, my great army which I sent among you. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The consuming locust, the chewing locust, and the chew, the, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. 
and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Jesus and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. When I heard that scripture last night, I say, Lord, that was just for me. And when the lady was, when it was an older lady, you could tell she was seasoning the Lord. Whoever that was played that part. She, she, she say for real, the anointing, the Jew, I mean, I say that scripture was just for me. She was reading to her daughter. I say, baby, that scripture for me. And I got and I began to read it and I began to rejoice. Honda, cool, because cause on the video I was bringing out how I had missed God. Honda, cool, see. Jesus, Honda, the how I let the allow the enemy to trick me out of my position, and I didn't think that I was gonna see that again. How I had missed my Kairos moment, and I was saying, Don't miss your Kairos moment, don't let nobody pull you out of place, out of position, out of what you thinking, out of what you doing. Keep on, you gotta keep going because you don't know if you're gonna, if you're gonna see that Kairos moment again. You don't know some moments you miss, you will not get back. And this was one of those moments that I thought I just would not get back. And then look how long it took. Nine and a half to ten years. And it didn't even seem like it. When I began to count the time when God showed me the time, I didn't even realize it had been that long. Baby, this is my prayer room. When we got ready to move, I said, God, I want me a prayer room. And when I tell you, because we didn't been here six years, and then, you know, the pandemic was two, like two, two and a half years. So that wasn't nothing but a sabbatical. And I used to just be in here just praising and worshiping and talking to God. It was so many times I just, you know, I felt bad that I had missed it. And I didn't know if I was going to get it back. I didn't know. I didn't know. Even with me going to ministry school, that was set up by God. Go. And every time I wanted to get, he said, You can't give up. You got to finish. When I tell you, <laughs> that, that, that scripture is so true. When God say What you do in secret, I will reward you in the open. Not even knowing if I was going to see it again. But I didn't give up. The smile. I, I kept pushing. And I pray. I was to I ward for this. It wasn't given to me. And it was not easy. But I was glad to do it. I found so much joy. And building that relationship with God. 
And when I wanted to give up, it was because of me, because I was like, I don't deserve it anyway. Because I should have never let nobody trick me out of my place where I was going up. Because when I tell you I decreased, I decreased. But God was still fighting for me. He was still fighting on my behalf. God was. He believed in me. And that made me believe in myself. Because God literally himself believed in me. I had to pause it again. So I'm just talking kind of low because you know my husband just made me. But God said he will never make his people ashamed. And then like I was saying before, like I just didn't know. You know, because that will get us the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen. But in the midst of me just, you know, if something happened or if I wanted to give up, it's like God just always just kept pushing me. He didn't allow me to. He was like, I just, I had to keep going. So that's why I be trying to like push and motivate, motivate you to win. Motivate you to never get up and don't just sit around waiting on nobody because ain't nobody coming. If you want to do and you want to know you know, even though you don't know what's beyond, you know, what's going on or how, what it's going to do, the hurdles and stuff, you got to keep pushing and you got to build your relationship with God for yourself. Study and read that chapter, Joel. When I heard that scripture, I said, Lord, that was just for me. When God say restoration, Ugh. I don't know what all that look like, but guess what? I'm excited. When you push and you don't give up, God say you going to reap if you faint not. And he give you a choice. This I suppose I would have fainted. And then in a movie that I was watching, when she read her daughter the scripture, her daughter was happy, was bitter and anger, angry at her ex fiance and he had left her and it was like maybe seven years it's, and I, that's another I say it's something about that seven it had been seven years since she had saw him and he just left and she didn't know why so he flew airplanes so when she was going somewhere on a trip he would end up being her the captain of the airplane and she saw him and then to make a long story short, he ended up visiting her. And he had changed his life. And he had told his friends how he treated her. You know, he had her. He didn't treat her good. But anyway, so she befriended him just to get back at him. And she destroyed him. She, she you know, he had became a pastor. You know, getting ready, to, but he's getting ready to be ordained as a pastor. And he allowed himself to get tricked. And he ended up, you know, sleeping with her. And when he ended up sleeping with her, some kind of way he got, she had, she had got pictures of him. And had him posted with two of her friends or whatever. And she posted it and his dad was the pastor. He allowed, he stopped the ordination. And he almost still gave up. He started back drinking and he was trying to apologize to her. He was begging her for her forgiveness. She wouldn't forgive him. She was like, I wanted, she wanted him to feel what she felt. So she got revenge on him after seven years. So he said, you're going to reap what you sow. He said, because you sold it out and you being envious. He said, but you're going to see it again. But he still was trying to get her to forgive him. But anyway, she wouldn't forgive him. He was begging her. 
And so she started hooking up with this other guy. So he seen her and the guy at the restaurant. So he went by her house a second time trying to get her forgiveness. But he didn't get out the car. He got out the car, got back in the car, got out the car, got back in the car. But when he got back in the car, he seen her and the guy coming outside. And he was watching them. And the guy ended up trying to rape her. And he ended up saving her from being raped. So she went to the police station. And the whole time, the guy was playing her. And he recorded their conversation. And he beat the guy up too. He got the guy off of him and went to the police station. And then the police officer told her, you know who you just had that encounter with. And he told her that the guy was the police officer, the chief, head of the police officer, that that was his daddy. So, you know, I, she didn't do nothing about it because she already knew and then it was them Nigerian people or African, whatever, how they talk. You know how they had them type of movies? Them movies be good. I like them. But anyway, um, after that, the business deal that she had, he had recorded it. He was a silent partner. So he tricked her. He, then he was trying to rape her. So um, after that, she didn't get the business deal because he had recorded it and it fell through. So just like she did the other man, you know, and her friend kept on trying to tell her not to be like that. But anyway, her mama came and her mama read her that scripture, Joel chapter 2, and she read her verses 23 through 27. And she went and got her book and she said God had gave her that scripture seven years ago and she ignored it because she was so hurt. She was so full of bitterness and so full of pain. She was mad. She was angry for seven years. She held that on the inside of her. So, um, after her mama read the scripture, she went and got it and told her mama that God had gave her that scripture, but she ignored God. Because she was too mad. She didn't want to hear nothing, but she still wrote the scripture down. And it was confirmation that it was God. She said, and seven years later, God giving me this same scripture. He broke her down like a fraction. So she was going to forget a man. But guess what? Before she could get a man, forgive him. He had started, you know, getting straight and just, you know, getting himself back together with God and getting back on track with God. He wasn't going to be the youth pastor again right then and ever. He still was getting himself back on track. So he got, um, he had took all that time off from flying. And because he was going to quit the job, he wouldn't have to go quit it. But the lady told him not to quit because he was a good worker. But the Holy Spirit was leading him to quit, but he didn't quit. So he got on the airplane with him and his friend and the, the, the friend. I think that might have been his wife or his fiance. They got on the airplane with him and it was just them three. Um, They turned on the news after she had her mama read her that scripture. After God showed her it had been seven years and she still was holding on to unforgiveness, they turned on the news after her mama got through praying with her and stuff and she was, you know, getting it out and she was ready to forgive him. The airplane crashed. And all three of them died. They didn't even find their bodies. And she cried so hard. And you could hear the wailing in her voice. And she was saying, Mama, I was going to forgive him. She was like, Mama, tell God. Tell him to give me another chance. Tell him, you know, she was praying. She was crying out. She was like, I was going to forgive him. He was the only man I would ever loved. But the man had died. Baby, guess what? The man knocked at the door. Because <laughs> she cried out and she will. And she begged God to forgive her. You know, and she wanted to forgive a man. She said, I didn't get a chance to forgive him. So when the man knocked on the door, he said, I heard you. You know, so she taking it that somebody might have told him. So they had a talk and she told him she was sorry. And they, you know, for, she forgave him. And then he told her, I realized that it wasn't my place to fix, try to fix you or get you to forgive me. It was God's place. He said, and I should have never tried to get you to do that, I just should have asked for forgiveness. If you didn't want to do it, I just should have let God do it. But I tried to do it. And she he, um, asked her for some water. And she went in the kitchen to go get the water. He put the airplane on the couch. 
and he had left. He had came back. God had allowed him to come back to see her so she could get peace. But he came back as an angel. Beware who you entertain. Because some of us sent, uh, some of us be in front of angels or we, I forgot how it go. But we entertain angels unaware. You never know who you entertaining. But God allowed him to come back as an angel. And she got her chance to apologize. And when she came back, that man was gone. And then her friend came and knocked on the door and she was telling her friend about it. And she was like, ain't nobody come out there. She said, because I've been sitting out there the whole time because I had to forget, I had forgot my kid. I had to come back and get it. And she showed her the airplane and she was like, you think he was a... And when she was going to say, you think he was an angel, she had passed out. I said, my God. That was a good move. And I got that strip shot of there. God had restored, was letting her know who he was going to restore her. But he had been told her that seven years ago, but she was still holding on to all that stuff. But it took all that to happen for her to see it. That's why I say we'll have to learn everything the hard way. It's like I be telling my testimony and I be saying, don't give up. Keep pushing, keep moving. It's because I've been there. I ain't had nobody tell me that. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? It's like God literally had to teach me. God literally had to keep pushing because I didn't have nobody to tell me those things. Like, I didn't know that you could be like that for a long time because I was, I, that was me. And look, the very thing that Kyle's mama that I missed, that I think I, that I thought I wasn't going to get back, nine and a half to ten years later, look at God. But nobody told me. Nobody told me. When I say God dealt with me through this whole situation, my whole purpose, this whole destiny, this whole journey, and it still ain't over till God says it's over. He literally. And before this last year in January, he allowed me to step out and do a women's conference. The Women of Royalty Conference. I didn't get a chance to record it. But I told God, I said, Lord, I don't care but one or two people show. It's me stepping out into purpose and destiny. And a year later, a YouTube channel later, a conference later, I done got ordained as prophetess. And not only prophetess, my name a Shamar prophetess. And I looked that up and I said, that is me. So I just want y'all to keep pushing. Keep pressing. Don't give up. Study that chapter. And I'm going to read just a small part of some of it with it mean. So I can go ahead and get off of here. And I had some more I wanted to read. But for the sake of time, I'll come back on tomorrow. Or whenever I get a chance, I'm going to be talking about the power of thinking. The power of thinking. The power of thinking. <laughs> So let me let me just read some of what it means. And if you have any questions, comments, you know, let me know. Comment on the channel. Um, subscribe to the video. And then I get the name of that movie. I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna put it in the comments and go watch that movie. It's good. If you like those type of movies, I like those type of movies. They good. Um, it was an inspirational movies, and I wrote that scripture down, and then. The thing of the, the other thing that she said was God is tenacious about his people. God is tenacious about his kids. He don't judge the way men and women judge. He don't judge us like that. God knows the very thing. Our insides. He knows our heart. He is tenacious about his kids. He don't play about his kids. And it says, um, spare your people. It says, if the leaders and the people. Now, this is coming from Joel chapter 2. And I'm reading some of what it means. Because, you know, I have the study Bible. So, verse 17 means spare your people if the leaders and the people would gather together with prayer of true repentance 
and genuine renewal. And that's what was happening with her. That's what was happening with me. We have to re get renewed. And you don't know how long it's going to take. You don't know what's going to happen. Who knew the world would come and shit down for two and a half years and you could go on a sabbatical? That was your way out. That was the way God that was going to get to you. The enemy meant it for bad, but God turned it around for a lot of people's good. The horrible events that God was threatening might be averted. And you know COVID-19 was a horrible threat to a lot of people. We shouldn't even be here. We shouldn't be here. But God said when he came back that, you know, a lot more things was going to happen before he come back. And how it was going to end. And that was man's way, not God's way. But he still allowed it. It says, um, if leaders and people will gather together with prayer of true repentance and genuine renewal, the horrible events that God was threatening might be averted. Why should they why should they stay among the people? This rhetorical question was designed to move God to intervene. Failure to come to Judah's aid might encourage the nations to make a mockery of Judah's God. God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. God going to show up. Why? Because he will not make, let you be made ashamed of. <laughs> it's okay. 18 and 19. Zealous for his land. The deep love of God. For the land of Israel is coupled with his abiding love, pity for the people on every occasion in which God brought judgment on the land. There was the hope that one day his zeal for the land would lead to a renewal of blessing and genuine repentance. And genu okay, genuine repentance is the prerequisite. Prerequisite. For God's blessing, you have to repent. In response to repentance, God will bring restoration and blessing. The north was regarded as the direction from which misfortune generally came. That's from verse 20. Upon Israel, the eastern sea refers to the Dead Sea. The Western Sea refers to the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, verse 21. Fear not. There is, there is coming a day when God's restoration of the earth will be complete. That's from verse 21. Verse 22. Open pastures. Tree, open pastures. Tree bears its fruit. The renewal of agriculture would be a sign that God had renewed prosperity and peace to his land. The former rain. I'm going to see, is this thing on? Okay, the former rain. South, the former rain, this is from verses 23. The former rain softened the soil for planting winter wheat. The latter rain fell in the spring. Causing the, causing the grain to swell and ensuring a good harvest. If the rains fell, the crops would not grow. Verse 25 and 26. The same God who brings judgment is pleased to restore blessings to those who repent. This does not mean that sin leaves no scar. But that God can restore people to usefulness in spite of past disobedience. Verse 27. I am in the midst of Israel. Ultimately, this is the promise of God's presence in the midst of his people in the coming reign of King Jesus. However, God promised to be present at all times with the individual 
who is at peace with him is an individual thing. Amen. And that's it. So you can go back and listen at that scripture and then listen at the um the study part that I wrote that go with it. Restore. God is going to restore. You gonna reap if you faint not. I'm gonna reap if I faint not. I gotta run and can't I can't get weary. And when you feel like you want to quit, don't quit. When you feel like you want to give up, don't give up. You're going to hear God pushing you. I'm telling you, don't quit. You got it. You can do it. But if you can push past it and keep going with tears down running down your eyes, with not knowing what your bank account looks like, not, not knowing what, how you're going to do this or how you're going to pay this, or, you know, if, if you're going to see it again, you got to keep pushing. If not, you're not going to know. You got to keep on going to see what the end going to be. Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And you got to stay humble. Don't get pumped up with pride. Because pride coming before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. I think I said that right. But being prideful is not good. You got to let go of that pride. I have to let go of pride. Because if you being prideful, you ain't going to be able to do it. If I was being prideful, I would never go. I would never allow me to got to get ordained because if man had anything with it to do with it, it wouldn't happen. It was nobody but God, and God was encouraging me the whole time because I kept on praying. I was like, Lord, is this the right thing for me to do? Do you want me to do it? You know, because I always wanted Apostle Brother Brown to ordain me because she don't play. And if you out of order, she gonna tell you. She ain't gonna she she ain't she ain't gonna sugarcoat it. And that's what I mean. Y'all want somebody to tell me the truth. And that's what she gonna do. She gonna tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. And I've always wanted her to ordain me. That's the same school I went to. But in God's timing, not knowing if I was gonna see it again. Don't miss your Kairos moment. Don't miss it. If you doing something or you in the right place and doing the right thing and you know you are in it because God put you there or he has you doing it, don't let nobody sway you out of it. Don't you even sway yourself out of it. You stay right there until God says so. And you gon' know. I ain't have nobody to tell me that. I had to learn the hard way. Because sometimes you could think you're doing the right thing. I don't care who. Don't do it. You make sure you pray and go and pray again. If God is saying don't move or he ain't telling you to do it. Let God do it. Because I still was praying. I was like, Lord, do you want me? You know, do you didn't guide me? And God was like, oh, it's going to happen. Because it's just, God will blow your mind. God, you can blow my mind. I'm about to do it. Woo. Yes, Lord, this is a move. So, baby, keep pushing. Study that chapter. Study your L. And see what God gonna do. Alright y'all have a blessed night. Subscribe to the channel. Like the videos. Comment on the videos. If you have a question. Um, if you have a, a subject that you would like for me to talk about. Um, if this is for you. Take it to God. Because I don't know everything. I don't claim I know everything. Take it to God. Anything I say or do, pray, take it to God. And if it's for you, it's going to resonate with you. If this channel is for you, it's going to resonate with you. Baby, don't miss your Kairos moment. Because you don't know if you're going to get it back. And I also got to learn that from a possible birth tomorrow. And don't burn your bridges. 
because you never know who you're going to need. You never know. You never know who you're going to need and who God will allow to come in your life and be a blessing to you. Don't burn your bridges. All right, y'all be blessed. Thumbs up the video. Like the video. Share my channel with somebody. Encourage somebody. Keep moving. Because you're going to reap if you faint not. And don't faint. Don't faint. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Because he is going to strengthen you. Everything that the cake of worms that came and ate up, that was my favorite part. So I will restore to you, Verna, London, the years that the swarming locusts has eaten. The crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts. My great armor which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. In God's word, will not return unto him void. Baby, baby, baby. God is preparing a table. Han da 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 bokosi. In the presence of your enemies. Jesus. God is preparing a table. In the presence of your enemies. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My God, keep on soaring, warriors. Keep soaring. Keep on soaring and don't give up. Because you're going to reap if you think now. Baby, God understood the assignment. God understood the assignment. He is about to blow your mind. God is about to do it. My God. Woo. I just got to shake my head, y'all. Because God is about to do it. Jesus, Jesus. Let that soak in. That God is about to do it. He is about to do it. God is about to do it. He is about to do it. You got to keep pushing. See, I didn't have nobody to tell me that. Keep pushing. But even when I step out of order because... I went to go get healed and get delivered and set free from bitterness and anger and hurt. Because you know, I know I tell you my testimony when I was like that and I stayed like that for about three years. And God delivered me fully. And I told God, I said, God, I don't ever in my life want to feel like that again towards anybody. Ever. It had consumed me. Jesus. And in the midst of, even though I miss that Kairos moment, I had to do my part. And baby, 
when I said I didn't ever want to feel like that again, God kept me. And still keeping me. When God do it, that's why you always hear me saying. Because somebody was in my comment talking about, you got to say, baby, I'm going to say hallelujah because God kept me. Ain't nobody going to tell me how to praise my God. I'm going to praise him till I can't praise him no more. And if you don't like the way I praise him, baby, don't look at this channel. Because I'm going to talk about God. I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to say hallelujah as many times as my mouth could let me. Because I should have been dead. I should have lost my mind. I should have went off. I should have whatever. Baby, but God. <laughs> oh, he kept me with peace and joy. Nobody could do that but God. Nobody could do that but God. <clears throat> Nobody but God. My voice sounded a little tired because I got up early with my husband other um when Wednesday morning and we was gone all day and I was so tired. So it excused my voice. But nobody but God could do it. Y'all just don't understand. You just don't know. is a keep when he deliver you and set you free and heal you he'll deliver and set you free it's done if you go back and pick it up it's because you want to but I don't never in my life till I live it I don't ever want to feel like that again I was numb and I had to go be delivered and when you pray yourself out of a situation like that Please don't go back. I don't care who it is. Don't do it. Don't miss your moment. I cried a many days with my dad in this prayer room because I felt like I had let him down. And I had missed because God was using me in a mighty way. And I was humble with a lot of things that God allowed me to do. People don't even know about it. And I haven't told it. And I'm still not going to tell it. But baby, when I tell you, he kept me. Even though I missed it. He told me when to be humble. He told me when to be kind. And I listened. If he told me you shouldn't be talking about I, If I had to just list up going there. I'd let people. I had to. And I might have thought I was being mean. But I wasn't. If not, I wouldn't have been able to get. I wouldn't have been able to get it. I wouldn't have been able to come pop at this burn of London and get ordained. That's powerful. What you could do, and God choose you to be a part of the Bible ministry, and He bestow that matter on you. It's a and an honor to be an ambassador for the king, the creator. Don't take it lightly. And I am excited about what God is getting ready to do. For his people. I am excited. He loves me. Jesus. He loves me. He kept me. He kept me. And I'm excited about what he is getting ready to do. That's it. I could go work on a job. I could be doing anything else. But I'm going to be an ambassador to my father, the creator. It's been a long time coming. You don't know my story. 
You don't know the nights I cried in here. That I felt so bad about I had missed what I had to do for God. Because we do everything else, but when it comes to God, we'll let people trick us out of our blessing. Not this time, devil. I'm going to fight till the end. I'm going to ride this thing till the wheels fall off. And even when they feel all off, I'm going to ride on the rim. <laughs> yes, Lord. I got to. Because God ain't bring me this for the leave me. I just can't give up now. Let me get off of here for a while. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Love y'all.